Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FKI Quality. Today I would like to speak with you about how to not build a control chart and of course how to build a control chart correctly. Control charts are made of three lines and these lines are the line of averages over here which we typically denote with an X and a bar and then two limits the upper control limit and uh, the, at the same distance as before the lower control limit. Now we use control charts to tell whether or not a process is displaying abnormal behavior. Abnormal behavior would be something like this. You have a certain variable that takes these values and then one over here and then maybe another here, another here and then there's one over here. That would be an abnormal behavior because it's just too far from the average and it's actually outside of the control limits. However, sometimes the variable may actually display this abnormal behavior even if it stays inside of the limits. That would be in a case such as this one. Instead of having this value over here, perhaps the variable simply decides to hover near this limit. And then this would also be an abnormal behavior because it's just getting too close to the limit, right? There's something going on here and we would like to know what's happening. So in order to do this analysis where something may be going on with the variable, even though it still is inside the limits, we have developed some intermediate lines. And these intermediate lines divide this space into thirds like this and also on this side. And this line is called the one sigma line. And this one is a two sigma line. And this one is known as a three sigma line. There will be nothing wrong with this if it weren't for the fact that the word sigma is also used to denote the standard deviation of a set of numbers, a set of values. And that sometimes creates lots of confusion where somebody will think, well, very clearly, but wrongly, the average, the, the upper control limit and the lower control limit are a certain distance which is identical to three times the standard deviation. In the next segment, we will see what are the problems with doing it this way and what type of errors it will lead to. And then I will also show what is the right way to do it. Control charts use limits that are usually called upper control limits and lower control limits. Unfortunately, sometimes they are also called the plus and minus three sigma limits. And this creates confusion because the word sigma also means the standard deviation of a data set. And what we want to discuss here is the fact that that concept is very different from the one that we need in order to calculate the control limits of a control chart in the right way. Think about this. The main purpose of the control chart is to display the behavior of a variable over time. With the passing of time, a variable will change from one day to the next. This is the natural variability that must be considered when calculating the upper and lower control limits. In the XMR chart, each moving range, which is the difference between today's observation and yesterday's, records these changes. Multiplying the average of the moving ranges by 2.66 gives us the space between both limits and the average. Calculated this way, the limits will alert us of any abnormal behaviors. On the contrary, the calculator's standard deviation S, or in Excel, stdev.s function, measures the deviations of each observation from the average, which is a totally different concept. The result of using S, or stdev, to calculate control limits, results in limits that are too wide and insensitive to out-of-control observations. In conclusion, only control charts created correctly can detect abnormal process behavior. This presentation is based on a one-page paper presented by Jean-Marie Gogue of the French Deming Association. Thank you for your time.